And next, let's connect our storage. For storage, again, we turn to the latest technical standards. And that is serial ATA to connect to the drives. 1.5 gigabit per second of bandwidth. We got independent interfaces to each drive, again, so there's no contention. This is an Apple-designed I.O. chip, again connecting to the mothership G5 controller with hypertransport. And lastly, the rest of the I.O. coming off this Apple-designed I.O. chip, we've built in an incredible suite of high-performance I.O. We've got FireWire 800 and 400, USB 2.0, Gigabit Ethernet, Airport Extreme, Bluetooth, and for the first time, optical, digital, in and out, as well as analog uh, audio in and out. So, this is our system, and uh, we're mighty proud of it. We think it is the beginning of a whole new generation of architecture for Apple. So that is the system. What kind of product are we going to build out of this? Well, the first thing is we're going to build products that have single or dual processors, obviously. Up to 8 gigabytes of memory, we are going to break through the 4 gigabyte barrier. And on this system, ship up to 8 gigabytes of memory. Now, why is this so important? Obviously, if you have stuff that takes more than 4 gigabytes, it becomes extremely important. But it's, it's even important in, in more subtle ways. The G5, as we said, is a monster in terms of bandwidth. And talking to the disk drive, it can talk at 150 megabytes per second if only the disk drives would feed data that fast. But to memory, it can talk at 6.4 gigabytes per second. That's over 40 times faster. And so with more memory, what that means is you can leave stuff in memory and not have to swap it off a disk. This is huge for certain applications, 40 times faster. This is so fast that you can transfer the contents of an entire DVD in less than a second. So 8 gigabytes of memory. We're building in a 4X super drive into all the models. We're building in GeForce F FX5200 Ultra chip into the two lower end models. And a Radeon 9600 Pro, one of the hottest mainstream graphics chips around, into the high end model. You can configure it however you want on our website, however. Now, all this great stuff, should we put it in here? No. No. We need a much more advanced enclosure to hold our next generation system. And we've been working on it for some time, and it is really exciting. It looks like this. Like that. And let's go ahead and show it to you now. <clears throat> there it is. This is an all-aluminum enclosure. <clears throat> this is an all-aluminum enclosure that is super high-tech and can handle the power, uh, both processing power and thermal power, generated by such an architecture and its follow-ons to come. I've left the door open off the side so you can see this thing. It is a thing of beauty. Now, let me show you better on slides, the inside. So we've got our enclosure here. We take, this is the front. As you can see, we want to get a lot of air in the front. There's the back. As you can see, we want to get a lot of air out of the back. So let's take off the door. Now, there's a piece of plastic on the inside which routes the air around. Let's take that off. And you can see the two processors, place for cards, place for rotating storage. This enclosure has four separate thermal zones. One that goes through the power supply at the bottom, one that goes through the processor bay and the memory, one that goes through the I.O. cards, and one that goes through the rotating storage. In this enclosure, we've got a breakthrough. We've got, this whole thing has got computer control cooling system in it. We've got nine fans in this enclosure. <laughs> now you might think, oh my god. 
Nine fans means it's going to be nine times louder. No. It turns out the opposite is true. Because by putting the fans precisely where they're needed and independently controlling them all, we can make it a lot quieter. A lot quieter. As a matter of fact, we're down to 35 dBA at normal use at room temperature. This is twice as quiet as the latest G4. So, this is an amazing architecture. It's an amazing enclosure that's going to give us a tremendous amount of room to grow. So the systems we're going to build are going to have single or dual G5 processors, up to 8 gigabytes of memory, up to 500 gigabytes of internal storage, half a terabyte, 4x super drive. They're much quieter using an advanced cooling system and the very professional aluminum enclosure, super rugged and super beautiful. So this is the new G5 enclosure. And again, I want to stress, we're the only folks that put handles on things. Because our pro customers love them. To be able to take these machines around, swap them in and out when they need to. This is huge. Nobody else in the whole industry does this. And we've kept that on the new G5 enclosure. The new Power Mac G5. It's going to come in three models. We got three models. The first model, a single 1.6 gigahertz G5 chip, quarter gigabyte of memory, 80 gigabytes of hard drive, G4 is 5200, 4X Super Drive, 1999. Second model, 1.8 gigahertz processor, step up 200 megahertz, double the memory, double the disk size, for only $400 more at 2399. Third model, dual 2 gigahertz. Radeon 9600, $29.99. Now, these are the models we're going to have on the channel. Of course, you can go to the website and configure anything you want. So what's the competitive landscape like? Well, obviously, we turn to Dell. right? They're the low-cost provider in the PC space. And we configured a system that isn't even as fast as the one that we have here for $29.99. Dual 3 gigahertz Xeon systems, 533 megahertz bus, the fastest PC money can buy. Same amount of memory, not quite as much disk, something that's not quite as good as a super drive, but we got as close as we could. And what do you think it costs? You can go do this today on Dell's website, over $4,000. So from now on, anyone who tells you that Apple's high-end machines are more expensive than PCs, you can tell them where to look. <laughs> the new Power Mac G5s, we're going to ship them in August, all three models. And that is the product with the system and the chip. So what kind of performance are we getting out of this thing? Well, I'm pleased to report that this is the world's fastest personal computer. Now let's, let's prove that. To prove that, there's two places to turn. One is analytic tests, and the most respected tests in the world are called spec tests. And second is real world applications. So let's start off looking at spec tests. We're going to compare three systems with three chips in them. Number one, two gigahertz G5 with a one gigahertz bus. Second, a 3.0 gigahertz Pentium 4 with an 800 megahertz bus, the fastest we can get our hands on, the fastest you can buy. And a 3.06 gigahertz Xeon processor, again, the fastest Xeon you can buy. And we're going to compare them in spec tests. These are industry standard tests run on these machines. We're going to use GCC 3.3 because we want to use an open source compiler that's the same compiler on all machines, and the compiler we all use, by the way. And there's a lot of test houses that help verify these things. And we hired one of the best, Veritest, to do independent tests and provide independent test results. So first, we're going to start off with single processor tests. And there's three, three systems we want to test, one with a single P4, one with a single Xeon, and one with a single G5. And let's see how they did 
in two tests, one that measures integer performance, spec in 2000, and one that measures floating point performance, spec FP2000. Well, the P4 scored 889 on integer, 836 on, on integer for the Xeon, and the G5 scored 800. Not quite as high, single processor integer. Let's see how we did on floating point. 693 for the P4, 646 for the Xeon, ooh, 840 for the G5. So we are 10% slower on integer and 21% faster on floating point. I think we can safely say that we basically caught up with a single processor system the fastest you can buy. But now let's look at dual processor.